Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can everybody hear me? No? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Woohoo. Isn't it wonderful just to praise the Lord? I mean, when you get in His presence, everything goes away. Everything that you thought you had a problem with gets melted. <laughs> I love it. You know, one day, soon, we're out of here. Glory. We're getting closer and closer. Every breath you take, you get the, the next breath is closer to home. <laughs> Wonderful. Would you grab your swords this morning? And turn to somewhere. <laughs> you know, the word of God is so powerful. And people don't really realize how important the word of God is in our lives. The word of God not only expresses testimony in the life of Jesus and the purpose. But there are covenant vows in the word of God that he has for me and you. And one of the things he's trying to get his people to stand on the word of God instead of everything else. And again, the battle every day is battle against emotion. We constantly are battling how we feel compared to what the word of God says. Because your feelings have another doctrine of itself. It's called itself. <laughs> but the doctrine of Jesus Christ is the doctrine of creator, covenant with creation, and all of his promises that are true and amen. And in this, there's that place where you and I stand. We are spiritually positioned in believing the word of God, following the word of God, and executing the word of God. And that is our responsibility. As a Christian, Christian meaning Christ-like, not world-like. In the Word of God, there are what we call conditional releases. Everyone say conditional, conditional. releases. There are not only conditional releases, but there's unconditional releases. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's only one unconditional release. The rest are conditional I'm going to say it again. The only unconditional release of God is his love. Amen. Everything else is a condition. That you and I must fall into agreement with his condition. Without that condition being met, the release is not manifested. Is everybody okay? So the only release, unconditional release, is God's love for humanity. <laughs> All other conditions of release, there's always a condition to it. Let's go to a couple places and we'll give an example of this. In Romans 8, if you'll turn there, please. Romans 8 somewhere. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? It says something very important. It says in verse 14. What does it say? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? So are you a son of God without being led by the Spirit of God? No, a condition must be met. Does everybody get it? Look at verse 28.
What does it say? And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So all things are going to work to the good to those who what? Love God. That is a condition. Now, Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey me. So these are conditions where all things are going to work to the good. Nothing's going to work to the good. So your mistakes are going to work to the good. Everybody got it? Your mistakes will work to the good. Of course, if you do something first, repent. <laughs> or else it ain't going to work to the good. To those who love him and are according, called according to his purpose. Again, he says, if you love me, you'll obey me. I, these are all conditional releases of God's promises. He says, look, at, after you do the will of God, which is a condition, then the promise of God is released. So he may be asking you to do something. These are covenant vows that he puts between creator and creation so he can bless your socks off. So he can make a way where there seems to be no way. But there's an area where you got to stop leaning on our own understanding. We got to stop relying on what everyone else says and what everyone else thinks. And we have to come back to what is eternal words and covenant compared to what the world has to say. In Matthew 3, would you go there, please? In verse 1, Matthew 3 and verse 1, it says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying what? Repent. It means confess your sins, turn away from them. For the kingdom of God is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Make his paths what? Straight. Now John himself was clothed in camel hair, camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. We know that that's not really real locusts. Anyways. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around John, the Jordan, went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, doing what? Confessing their sins. Confession of sins is a requirement. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Bro to vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath of God? Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father, for I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Now, trees here are a representation of spirit, human beings, people. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing, winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquestionable fire. Now, this is powerful because he says something again. Repent. Turn away. Confess your sins. It is a requirement. It's a requirement of salvation. You can't get saved without it. And so in that, this righteous requirements is so that we bear fruits of righteousness. In Mark 8. We should be quick to repent. We should always look for conviction. Anything that you do, Lord, is that pleasing to you? I want, I'm looking for conviction. Of what I said pleasing to you is the decision that I made pleasing to you. See, people have got to come to a place where they can't take things personal. They must be co come to an area where it's kingdom business. 
I'm about kingdom business, not about personal business. My decisions may offend many people, but that's between them and God. Because I know if I'm pleasing my father in the decisions that I make, then I'm good. If I have no conviction, even though I seek conviction, does everybody get it? It's why, why, what, what is the condition then? If I'm seeking these things, then I know I'm pleasing him. And the condition of knowing that you're pleasing him, you have favor. Amen. Oh, grab hold of this. Mark 8, 34. Let's speak it. When he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him what? Deny, Deny himself. Is that a condition? Amen. Yes. Take up his cross, which means you must fight, and follow me. These are conditions of following Jesus. Without these two first conditions, you can't follow. What does he say? Deny yourself. Deny the world. Then he says, pick up the cross. Take up your sword. Fight. Because without a fight, you can't follow me. Because there will be resistance in every area of your life of the powers of darkness to prevent you from following me. And they will come with lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. The three main categories. Is everybody okay? In verse 35. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loves his, loses his life for my sake and the gospel will what? Save it. Well, now that's totally opposite of the worldly thinking. Because the world says, save your life. They're so survivalists, but we're surrenderers. So we want to offer our life in exchange for his life. And this is where we've got to examine ourselves. Are we beginning to pick up your life again. You know, just because you haven't picked up the whole part of your life from before doesn't mean you're still not picking up parts of your old life. Amen. And it begins to open doors. I see people, man, you take somebody's cell phone away for a while and they can get right with God. I'm telling you. Because the only one they can talk to is him. You give them their cell phone, the first thing they want to do is contact everybody from their past. It blows me away. Or all their family members, hi, I got a phone. It's the biggest stumbling block you could have. <laughs> because if it's not used according to kingdom business, then it's used according to carnal business. Does everybody get it? It says again, whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's sake will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, all internet and all cell phones and loses his soul? <laughs> <laughs> for whoever is ashamed or, or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. I'm telling you, Facebook is nothing but flesh book. If it's not used for kingdom, I'm, it's amazing to me. Everybody's just showing off their faces. Don't you see it enough in the mirror? <laughs> in fact, you need to find out what other faces are in your mirror. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> Deny yourself. Pick up the cross, which is the sword. We are to fight to follow. We must be willing to lose our life for a new one. That is the condition. <laughs> and to maintain a new life by continuing to lose your old life. And then there's conditional releases. And what's that release? A new life. From above, denying the life from beneath. 
So confess your sins, deny yourself, fight, follow to receive salvation and maintain salvation. These are called conditional releases because you must cooperate. A condition means it is required for me and you to cooperate with what? With God says, with his leading, with his word, and by his spirit. And Romans 8. Conditional releases. People want God to do all kinds of things for them, but they're not willing to meet the condition for things to be released. Again, that's that false entitlement syndrome. <laughs> Why do you think Obama was handing out free cell phones? Amen. Well, who was telling him to do that? God didn't tell him to do that. So the devil did. Does everybody get it? Because he was a servant of darkness, not of light. That's why he's calling Obama night. He didn't even, he, look at, he changed his name. You know that, right? It's not even his real name. In fact, it's amazing to me because people don't get it. He was a ex foreign exchange student in this country. Think about this. He was a foreign exchange student into this country with a grant. So that means he's not a U.S. citizen. But I'm not here to argue all that stuff. One plus one does equal two. He was planted, not by God. Brought down this country. People got deceived. And they're still caught up with the uh, uh, doctrine, that agenda doctrine of the left. Blinded, deceived. How can somebody proclaim to be a, a Christian if they still approve death to unborn? How can they still say that they're a Christian if they approve homosexual, lesbian, and transgender relationships? God did not create Adam and Steve. He created Adam and Eve. All of these things are just not in demons, but in people. No, they weren't born that way. But that spirit got in them somehow. Anyways, Romans 8 verse 1. <laughs> There is therefore what? No, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who did not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. So wait a minute. Is there a condition? Amen. Yes. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh that the what? Righteous requirement. How many of y'all know a righteous requirement is a conditional release? Of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the flesh and the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to be counterly minded is what? Death. Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. In other words, it hates God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh can't please God. Now when you please God, do you have favor? Yes. So if you don't please God, can you have favor? No. That's a condition. And he's saying, look, it, if you're walking in the flesh, not only are you under the condemnation, but you're going to die. You're going to die. So listen, the enemy promotes a doctrine of flesh. Why? Because the word says, he who sows to the flesh reaps what? Corruption means you're dying. But he who sows to the spirit reaps what? Life. That's a condition. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. It is a righteous requirement, even for salvation. 
For God's promises to be released, there must you and I must meet the conditions of everything. Healing, freedom, prosperity, everything. There's a condition to be met on everything you and I do in the kingdom. The only unconditional release is God's love. It's constant. Acts 16. In verse 16. Is everybody there? Amen. Acts 16, 16. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. So what spirit is behind palm readers and fortune tellers? Spirit of divination. It's called familiar spirits. You go to them, you open the door to them. That's why people read the horoscopes, they open the door to a demon. You go to a Chinese place, do not read the fortune cookie. You'll open it up. You don't need to know your future through carnality and demonic forces. It's all here. It's right in the word. God already says who you are. He's already got your future planned out. People bring curses on themselves because of these things. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. Now was she telling the truth? Yes, but that spirit was mocking. And this she did for many days. <laughs> Many days. She's following Paul everywhere he's going. He's preaching the gospel and she's following these guys. Finally, Paul got it. She was not really a true follower because he began to sense the fruit of it. It began to irritate him. But Paul, greatly annoyed, <laughs> turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And that spirit came out of that person that very hour. But when her master saw that her, their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. Uh-oh. So were they using demonic forces to gain money? Yes. And they brought them to the magistrates and that said, these men being Jews exceedingly troubled our city. And they teach custom which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. That was a religious act. They tore off their clothes like repentance, but they didn't repent. Bunch of religious morons. Verse 23. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them secretly or securely. Having received such a charge, he put them in the inner prison and fastened their feet in the, in the stock. So they were all the way in the center of the prison where nobody could reach them. And then they chained them. Now, you got to understand, they had just been whipped badly. They were bleeding. They got thrown into the center of a prison and they got chained. They had no one there to tender their wounds, nothing. They were hurting terribly. And they did nothing wrong but cast out a devil. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. They didn't let the affliction affect them. Amen. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were what? Loose. What a condition that was met. Amen. Praise and worship. 
And the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep, seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had left, drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he knows he was going to get killed anyways. But Paul ca called with a loud voice saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. And he called for a light, ran in and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be what? Saved. So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all who were in his house. And he took them this, took them the same hour at the, at the night and washed their stripes. Then what was, then he tended to their wounds, didn't he? Look at what happened. Why? Because Paul and Silas met the conditions that pleased God. Opened the prison doors. Everybody in the prison got saved. And even the jailkeeper brought them to his house and tended to their wounds and fed them. <laughs> and immediately he and his family were baptized. Now, when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them, and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all of his household. Oh, my gosh. Listen, if, if you and I will just meet these conditions that God requires wherever you are and whatever happens in every moment of your life, meeting the conditions where God can release his presence, his power, his love, his truth, and salvation, it is wonderful to know that he's there with you all the time. All the time. Oh, glory. <laughs> Meeting the conditions for release <laughs> from prison and bondage. Singing and praising while in pain. Incredible. Most people are more focused on their pain instead of, or their condition, instead of meeting the condition. Psalm 34. Thank God we can edit. <laughs> Psalm 34 and verse all. <laughs> is everybody there? Verse 1. Let's speak it. We're going to sow this. Why? Because what you sow is what you reap. He who sows that a spirit reaps life. So we're going to meet the condition. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be what? Glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let's, let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my what? Fears. What was the condition? Praise and worship. Does everybody get it? They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped all around those who what? Fear him and does what? Deliver. So you want to, how do you get the angel of the Lord to encamp around you? You must maintain the fear of the Lord. That's honor, respect, and reverence to him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who what? Trust in the Lord. Now, if you're blessed, do you have favor? Yes. Now, how are you going to get that? By what? Trusting in the Lord. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who what? Fear. fear. So there is no want to those who reverence, honor, and respect the Lord and trust him. He's going to make a way where there seems to be no way. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who what? Seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. There's another condition. Come, you children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is a man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Those are conditions for a long life. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil and to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord does what? Hear. He hears. And the righteous, so you've got to have manifest the fruits of righteousness. 
and delivers them out of all of their troubles. You ever been in trouble? Well, don't raise your hand. <laughs> Believe me, we've all been in trouble. I could lift every hand, foot, and toe. But he delivers you out of all of them. The Lord is near to those who have a what? A broken heart that's humble and saves such as has a contrite spirit. That's a humble heart, not a prideful one. I encourage you, don't challenge God, but allow him to challenge you. He guards all of his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall s slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. What? Uh, that, that's nothing but a psalm of conditions. Amen. <laughs> Second Corinthians 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And don't give your phone number out to a moron. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't give your phone number out to somebody that ain't right. Look at if they're not right with God, don't give your phone number to them. You don't think the enemy's going to eventually use them to get to you? Even if, listen, if they call themselves a Christian, they're not followers, they're not. Amen. Give them your email, they can't get to you. <laughs> and you can always delete it. <laughs> Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Do not be what? Unevenly yoked with unbelievers. Hello. This is a condition. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with an idiot? I mean, idol. For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I'll walk among them. I'll be their God. And they'll be my people. If they'll do something. Here's the condition. Come out from among them, man. And be separate, says the Lord. And don't touch what's unclean. And I'll receive you. I'll be a father to you and you'll be my sons and daughters. It's real simple. That's a condition to be met. Come out from among the wicked, unclean world. Don't touch their desires. Come close to him. Become his sons and daughters. My goodness, what an honor it is to have a father and be a child of the creator of all creation. It's an honor and a blessing to even know it. Oh, hallelujah. He is the father of life. <laughs> Matthew 6. Conditional releases. Oh, yes. Matthew 6, verse 31. Don't, therefore, worry about everything. <laughs> yes. Stay up all night. Worry about everything. Have fun. <laughs> what does it say therefore do not worry it's saying what shall we eat oh my god <laughs> I ain't going there or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for after all these the heathen seek for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things but first seek the what the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things will be what? Added to you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own self. Sufficient is the day in its own troubles. Look at 
Don't fear or worry. <laughs> if you seek the kingdoms, now he, seek the kingdom of God means seek his righteousness. People seek the kingdom of God. They open the Bible. Okay, I sought the kingdom of God. I call on Jesus. That's seeking. There must be a fruit of right. What, in other words, righteousness means, what can I do, Lord? How can I meet the condition that pleases you in this circumstance? So don't fear or don't worry. If you meet, if you seek the kingdom's righteousness, you'll get direction that bears fruits of righteousness. And then all things will be released to you. Amen? For what you need. So don't freak out. Don't get on the phone. Go to the throne. Psalm 103. Somebody calls you, man, I don't know what to do, man. I gotta, blah, blah, blah. Go pray. And if they don't know how to pray, lead them to Jesus. Amen. Then pray for them. Then the word says, it, it says, people should be praying for themselves. Somebody got it? Pray for yourself. You should be the first one you pray for. Because you're no good to anyone else unless you're prayed up. Amen. And you're filled up and dressed up and armed up. You need to take care of you first. Does everybody get it? Then you can go out and take care of everything else. It doesn't mean you're coming for putting yourself first. Does everybody understand that? You're denying yourself of the world. So while you're praying for you, you're cutting loose of your old and all of your garbage and everything. You're repenting. You repent. You get dressed. You get filled. You make declarations. You declare the truth. So the word of God goes before you. The angels are going before you. Then you intercede for other people. But first, you need to get dressed and possessed with the Spirit of God. Psalm 103. Verse 1. Bless the Lord, all my what? Soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Now, how do you bless the Lord? Praise and worship. Bless the Lord, all my soul. And don't forget... Not his benefit. Don't forget. Don't forget the benefits of meeting the condition. And what does he say? He forgives all your iniquities. In other words, when you repent. Listen, forgiveness is not a feeling. It's a choice. Well, I don't feel forgiven. Well, then you'll never be forgiven. But you are forgiven. Stop coming out, stop floating in emotion. It's got nothing to do with forgiveness. Even when you forgive someone else, forgive them, it's done and over with. Or when you blow it, Lord, forgive me. He doesn't remember it, but the devil does. Amen. And he'll bring it to you. Your old man remembers it. Are you kidding? He takes account of everything because he's a servant of darkness. And he's still there. But those who are led by the Spirit crucify him. So you need to stick a, a Bible in his mouth. So he, can't, he can only declare the word. Who forgives all your iniquities and does what? Heals all your diseases. This is meeting the condition, isn't it? Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Let me tell you, I decree this every single day of my life. Every day. I decree this. Those first five verses. My prayer time. I decree it. Feelings. Woo. Woo. So we need to confess our sins, get a pure heart, clean hands, to dwell in his presence. These are benefits. These are part of his conditions. When you meet, they're released. Philippians 4.
These are vows, aren't they? Did you ever make a vow? Did you ever make a promise? Did you ever make a promise to complete something and you didn't? Don't raise your hand. Every one of us has done that. But thank God we repent for unfulfilled vows. Lord, forgive me for not fulfilling what I was supposed to. Doesn't mean you won't reap. You still will reap for unfulfilled vows. Does everybody get it? But the quicker you pent, the, qu the quicker that stops the reaping. The, the level, the amount of reaping, it takes longer to repent. So if you've done something you know you should have repented for and you didn't, that reaping builds up, 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 builds up until you finally say, oh, Lord, forgive me. Well, it's still there. Now you got to go through that reaping. Does everybody get it? So people are expecting God to just do something overnight. Not saying he can't. But you must reap what you've done already. Thank God it stops. But he will turn that reaping to train you. Because the devil will get before the Lord. Look at him, he's got to reap. Because he's the accuser of the brethren. The devil knows the word of God more than you and me. But he uses it against God's people. And he knows it's God's word and God can't come against his own word. So the battle is in the arena where the devil accuses you before God. And so many times we tie the hands of God where nothing, he can't do nothing. Until we've come to that place and meeting that condition. So a release can be manifested. But everyone reaps what they sow, no matter what. Sometimes it takes a while to go through that reaping. Sometimes it takes years. And sometimes it comes real quick. But depending what you allow in God to bring you through your trials and tribulations to bring you through these things. He'll teach you. He'll train you. He'll use all of the reaping do you to work to the good if you let him. But don't grumble and complain because it stops it. You grumble and complain, you add more reaping. Philippians 4. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. In verse 4. Hallelujah. four, of course. 4-4. Four, four. Come on, where are you? There you are. It says what? Rejoice in the Lord. When? Oh, oh glory. I say again, rejoice and let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is where? At hand. So when the Lord is at hand, is there a gentleness? Yes. Be anxious for everything. For what? Nothing. So is this a condition he's trying to get you to meet? All right. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by what? Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. So when somebody starts going and complaining, just do the, go pray. Shut up and go pray. <laughs> and then it says, here's the, look at, here it comes. Are you ready? And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. In other words, you ain't got to figure it out. Will guide your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Why? Because you know all things are going to work to the good. Amen? Acts chapter 1. Condition. Conditional releases. Oh, this one here, they, me they messed up, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> they really messed up on this one. In fact, they're still messing up on this one. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus is rose from the dead. He's hanging out. It says in verse 2, To whom he also presented himself alive after his sufferings by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during what? Forty days. 
and speaking of the, the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So Jesus rose from the dead and he hung out for 40 days. Because then 10 days later he was going to release the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And verse 4, let's speak it together. And being assembled together with them, he did what? He what? He commanded. Everybody see command. 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 Man, if God commands you to do something, I encourage you to do it. He commanded them. What would he command? He commanded 500 disciples. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they heard, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He wasn't talking about the kingdom of Israel. He was talking about the kingdom of God. And he said to them, it's not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall what? You shall do what? You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria and to the end of the earth. The condition was to be obedient to the Lord. He commanded them not to leave. Stay. Meet together. Ten days from now. Don't let the enemy move you out. I want you to be in this place so you can receive my spirit and be empowered so that there's a true connection between me and you and you will have my spirit. You will think like me, you will see like me, and you will talk like me. And you will have power like me. To what? To overcome the world. Well, only 120 showed up out of 500. The rest started denominations. That's where we got all of this denominational garbage. There's no denominations in heaven. It's got nothing to do with an organization. Either you're a Christian or you're not. It's amazing to me. People go, what faith are you? Well, I'm a Catholic or I'm a Baptist or I'm a Protestant. That's got nothing to do with it. That's a stinking label. You're either a Christian or you're not. Amen? And, it, you know... I met this gentleman who was Jewish, and he says, I'm Jewish. I'm, I'm the promised child. <laughs> Bro, just because you're Jewish don't mean you're getting home. Amen. You need Jesus to get home. Anyways, the condition, they did not meet. And because they didn't meet the condition, they had no power. They only had word. Amen. Hello? James 1. And almost done. James chapter 1. In verse 2. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Conditional releases. Again, we could spend years here going through the Bible with conditional releases. <laughs> Remember, what, what did the Lord do? What, you know, think about this. When the, when the Lord called Moses, right, what did he do? He gave him law. He gave him a law. The law was to expose their sin. He says, listen, this is for you. If you'll submit to these, a conditional release will be brought forth. But they didn't. They didn't. And they were brought into captivity. When conditions are not met, bondage comes. You can be financially bound. Physically bound or spiritually bound? James 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. This is where some of your reaping comes from. They're called various trials. Amen? But it says count it all joy. 
knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance or patience. So you're going to go through it. It's part of training. And it never stops, you know. I mean, you get a break here and there when you sleep sometimes. You know, sometimes. You can be, you can be training while you're sleeping too. But let patience, that endurance, this patience, have its what? Perfect work. This is where that condition is. Let patience have its perfect work that you may be what? Perfect and complete, lacking nothing. There it is. Why? What does God want to do? <laughs> he wants to get you to a place where you prosper spiritually, physically, and financially. That's his desire. He says, but if any of you lacks wisdom, now he's saying, look at man, you're going to need some wisdom here. Let him ask of God who gives it to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven, tossed by the wind. And for that, let not that man think, suppose he's going to get anything from the Lord. Why? Because he doubts. He is double-minded and unstable in all his ways. So let patience, endurance have its perfect work that we may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. These are all vows with God in his word for you and I to prosper spiritually, physically, and financially. What does he say? He says, I praise you every day, Lord, that I may fulfill my vows daily. Daily. In Proverbs 2. Verse 1, my son and daughter, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom. Need wisdom. Tells you what to do. And apply your heart to what? Understanding. Yes, if you cry out for her for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures. Well, you know, when you see if, it's a condition, always. So he's given you all of the conditions. Uh, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of the justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand the righteousness and justice, equity in every good path. Wisdom, understanding, and discernment and knowledge from above to overcome the world ruled from beneath. First John chapter 2, and we'll close here. That's why he asked. First John chapter two. In verse fifteen. There's a condition. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It says, don't love the world. <laughs> don't love the world or yourself. Or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God does what? Abides forever. That's why Jesus said, look it, you need to abide. If he who abides in my word, abides in my presence, abides in my fellowship, will abide forever. He says, little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. It says they went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, 
they would have continued with us, but they went out that they may be manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One, the Holy Spirit, and you know all things. I've not written you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one. And he's an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you will also abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise. This is the release, the conditional release by abiding. By not loving the world, by coming out from among them, by fulfilling your vows daily of the word of God. This is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I've written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you. The left doctrine. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you don't need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Powerful. Powerful. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed as you prepare us for release is meeting the conditions that you have required. We ask again, Lord, for your mercies and grace and counsel, correction and direction, conviction, and even chastening, that we may get things in divine order to meet all conditions of growth and maturing and prospering physically, spiritually, and financially that we may be signs and wonders for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.